Hi guys, Ali Pierce at the ranch, and uh, I wanted to just quickly share this with you. You can go on to uh, YouTube, of course, and you can get all kinds of information about different rifles, how to clean them, how to rebuild them, all kinds of stuff. But uh, so I, th this is nothing special, nothing new, but I thought I'd share it with you. It's kind of nice. This is a very old Kui Model 39. I know it's old because <clears throat> this particular Kui was made by the, uh, let's get it right here now, the Kui Machine and Arms Company. They changed your name shortly afterwards. Eventually Cooey was purchased by Winchester and you would then buy Cooey Winchester rifles. But this is a very old one. I'm going to guess some of the, uh, I don't know, 50s, maybe the 60s at the very latest. Uh, made in Coburg, Ontario, Canada. A lot of people aren't aware that Canada has a has a pretty substantial uh, uh, firearms um, uh, manufacturer business. This company is now working out of Lakefield, Ontario, not too far away. But anyway, it's a nice little rifle. So why do I, why do I want to show it to you? Well, first of all, it didn't look like this when I bought it. These little old 22s are very popular, and uh, now you have to pay pretty good dollars for them. This gun was about $60, brand spanking new, if that much. I'm not even sure if it was that much. It's a single shot, uh, Kui, very popular Model 39 as a beginner rifle, and that's exactly what this is for. I wanted to get a nice, safe, easy to use, accurate rifle for my grandson. He's five. Yeah, no, he's not going to get it tomorrow. He will get it eventually when he's ready, when he and his dad decide that he's ready. So, um, so uh, I got it ready for him. I spent about a week getting it in a decent shape. It sure as heck didn't look like this. It was beat, pretty rusty. The barrel was nice, but the rest was all beat. Sights, the 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 uh, the. the um, the bolt and, and uh, the handle, bolt handle was uh, not in very good shape. Uh, nice wood, they've always had nice wood, but it sure didn't look like this. I don't know if you can get some close-ups, Kevin, but you can see how very beautiful the wood is now. And you can see how I polished the bolt. So the bolt and the bolt handle are shiny and clean now. The sights have been removed cleaned, blued, replaced, the barrel was blued. This, uh, this little gun, this little Kui 39, now looks virtually brand new. And I'm, I'm very, very pleased with how it turned out. I'm no gunsmith, but I am very, very handy with guns. And if it's a fairly uh, straightforward, simple gun, particularly the older ones, I have no problem. Now there's another reason why I chose this and why I thought I would put this on at the ranch. Because if, <clears throat> if you folks have, have a son or a grandson, or, and you're looking for maybe their first rifle, uh, this would be a good choice. First of all, it's relatively inexpensive, even though they have gone up in price. I paid um, $125, $125 for this. It's pretty beat. If it was in really good shape, you might pay $150, $175, maybe as much as two for it. Um, but I, you know, I actually took pride in bringing it up like this, and I can tell my grandson that uh, I restored it and made it beautiful for him. There's another reason, though. This is probably the safest gun available today. In my opinion, it's safer than a modern rifle. A modern rifle that would actually have a safety on it. Does that make any sense? This gun is safer. Let me explain the operation. If you're not familiar with it, I'm going to take one quick shot as you do this. It's simply easier to take the shot than it is to take the, uh, take the bullet out of it. But it's just about that simple. The bolt comes up and pulls back. Just as simple. It is a single shot. So there's your action. You can see right down the barrel. You take your 22 and with little fingers, <laughs> it's easier than it is with my big old fingers. You put the 22 cartridge inside and close the bolt. Now, it's, it's nice because at that point, at that point, the per gun is perfectly safe. There is no safety on it, but you can't. I don't, I'm not going to pull the trigger, but if I did, nothing happens because the bolt is not cocked. It's automatic at this point. You put the cartridge in, close the bolt, and you're ready to shoot, but you can't shoot until you see your target. And this is how, in my opinion, you should be training young people. If you do actually put the bolt in, if you actually do load the gun, you still can't shoot until you actually are ready to shoot your target, until it's aimed and ready to shoot. And that's the case right now. You can't shoot this gun even if I wanted to. So the next step, if I wanted to shoot the gun, I have to take this and manually pull the bolt back. Now it's cocked. No safety on this gun, but it's cocked and ready to shoot. So now I would aim, I aim over there, and one nice little shot, 22. Now just repeat the process. There's the old cartridge, a new one, put it back in. Again, it's loaded, but now I'm going to pull the trigger because there's no cartridge in it. See? Can't shoot. Perfectly safe. Now, 
pull the bolt back and it's ready to shoot. So it's a beautiful little gun. It's light, it's beautiful shape and, and has some collector's value. And maybe it has some value for my grandson because his, his grandpa picks it up for him. And it's beautiful, safe little gun to learn to shoot. So that's one rifle. I have one more I wanna show you as well, which is another perfect little rifle for you folks living in the country on a ranch. All right, guys, I'm back with this uh, second special rifle for uh, ranchy type people. <laughs> and uh, this one you'll probably recognize, you may recognize anyway. This is a Savage 24, quite a famous, quite a well-known rifle. And again, if you go onto YouTube and you simply put in Savage 24, you'll probably find, oh, I don't know, 200, 200 uh, 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 YouTubes about it. So I, I don't need to tell you very much how, how to fix it, how to clean it, what it does, and so on. But this gun is quite famous as well. This was made in the 60s, this particular one. It's uh, not a new one by any stretch, but it's a nice one. This is the um, 24H. They started at 24A. So you can see they just went along quite a while. 24H, and it's a DL, Deluxe. Deluxe simply means that the wood is particularly nice. It has white line on uh, both the uh, um, shoulder and on the butt plate and also has a silver plated uh, uh, sides on the action with a bit of engraving. A pretty little fox here jumping onto a mouse I guess and on this side there's a grouse, a pheasant or a grouse uh, heading off uh, looking for something. But the, the thing that makes this particular gun nice for ranchy type people like us, <laughs> is that it's a very, very wide purpose gun. If you have a 30 out 6 you can shoot lots of things with it. It might be a little bit tough for duck hunting, a little hard on rabbits, groundhogs, and so on, but it's, it's a good all-around gun, rifle. If you have a, 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 a Remington 1100 semi-automatic 12 gauge, Great, good for ducks and geese and so on. Uh, you could use it for deer, I suppose, you, you know, with the slugs in it. And so this little gun, you can take this out and within reason, no matter what you see, you can properly, safely, and, and cleanly take it. Let me explain what I mean. It's a double barrel gun. It has two barrels. If you look at the front here, you'll see there's a large barrel on the bottom, barrel on the bottom, and a small barrel on top. That's because this is a brake action gun, and as you can see looking here, you can see that there are two barrels. You can see them there inside the action. Now the top barrel you can see is much smaller. This particular one is a 22 Magnum. It also comes in 22. It also comes in other cartridges. You can get this with a 222. You can get it with a 3030 on top. Yeah, there's all kinds. I think there's one for one couple of years they made one with a Hornet, which is a 22 gauge, roughly. A Hornet, just a high power 22, I think. And then you notice know, so the bottom is a shotgun. And the shotgun also kind of comes in various combinations. This could be a 410 or a 20, like this one, or a 12. I think that's the only three they ever made. They didn't make 16s or 10s in this. So you get different combinations, and I have seen them. I have seen 3030 over 12, and I've seen 222 over 12. I've seen 22 over 410, 22 over 20, all kinds of combinations. This particular one I like. It's 22 Magnum over 20. First of all, let's talk about the 22 Magnum. You're all familiar with 22s. I think I have these cartridges in my pocket. I do indeed. You're all familiar with the 22s. So here's the standard 22 line rifle. <clears throat> Very good. Certainly up to 50 yards, even 100 yards, a little bit of care if you have a rest depending on the animal. The 22 Magnum is technically exactly the same diameter, although there can be some differences. You got to be careful. You cannot, these are not interchangeable. Just because they're both 22s, they're not interchangeable. There's the 22 Magnum. Now you can see that the cartridge, the brass cartridge, is much, much longer. Yes, of course, it has a lot more powder in it. The bullet on the end is almost exactly the same. I believe they're both 50 grain. I'd have to check on that, but they're both the same. But a lot more power than the 22 Magnum. So the 22 Magnum, as is used in this particular rifle, is handy for almost any kind of small game. Everything from squirrels to quite a bit larger foxes. A coyote with a good shot to the head would uh, also be easily taken with the 22 Magnum. So it's got a wide versatility in terms of the rifle on this gun. The 20 gauge cartridge, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it, is also a great all-round shotgun uh, shell uh, uh, cartridge. This, this is certainly better than a 410 in my opinion and the, the 20 gauge is good. Uh, small animals, rabbits, uh, birds, uh, grouse, partridge, pheasants, a little bit light for uh, ducks and definitely light for geese and turkeys, but 
Not out of the question. It'd be entirely up to you. It'd depend very much on the conditions, the distance, you, the shot, the bird, the animal, whatever. But it's a good combination. And this rifle is also a fine example, like the uh, like the Cooey 39 that I uh, had a few minutes ago, of an extremely safe, easy to use. Let me show you what I mean. As on the 39 I showed you earlier, it does not have a safety. Now some of these earlier, uh, some of these late model, Model 24s, they still make this. I don't know if they still make it in the in the barrel combination where the barrels are fastened together. These are these barrels are silver soldered full length together. And I think the later, the current versions of the Savage Stevens 24 has a separated, the two barrels are separated and they have they have supports along their length. I don't, I'm not too sure about that. But I do know that most of the late models, the current model 24s, have a safety. A button right here that you push to make it safe. Watch. Let's put the 20 gauge shell in and let's put the 22 Magnum shell in. Just that easy to load. And you can see it's very easy to get to. It's wide open, very easy to get to. Okay, now snap it closed and you're ready to shoot. You can't shoot. But it's a little bit like a single action revolver. It's not cocked yet. Right? So now what you need to do, if you decide to shoot, you need to actually cock the gun. Let's shoot something with the 22 Magnum. I shot already with the 22. So we'll do that again. So let's cock it. First of all, now the 22 is on top. So right here on the hammer, there's a little button. Pull it back like this so that the actual striker is on top. It's going to hit the 22 Magnum like that, just that easy. If I flip it forward, the striker is low. When I pull the trigger, it's going to hit the shotgun. It's going to hit the lower barrel, center fire firing pin. Just like that. Now up to that point, you can't hurt yourself. It's perfectly safe. Nothing can happen. I won't pull the trigger because there are cartridges in there. But trust me right now, if I pulled the trigger, nothing would happen. Can't be any safer. You can walk around. Still should not point it at anything you don't want to shoot. But you can walk around and it's perfectly safe. Just that easy. I want to shoot something, pull it back. There's a groundhog over there that I'd like to shoot. Are you ready, Kevin? Got him. Nice. I scared up a, car a partridge as well. There's a partridge, 25 yards, just walking along, just about to fly off. So now I push the hammer down, so now it's going to shoot the shotgun, and I shoot the partridge. Just that easy. Break, pull them out, put new ones in. I love the smell of gunpowder. <laughs> put new ones in, close it up, and you're ready. You see, quick, easy, very, very versatile, and very, very safe. It also happens to be short and light. Pretty hard to beat. Nice combination for everything. I'm not going to say it's a perfect rifle. It certainly is not. I'm not going to say it's a perfect rifle for all combinations of conditions in game. Obviously not. But for walking around your ranch, predators, taking care of problems, little game, and so on. Quick, easy, versatile, safe. Pretty hard to beat that combination. I like it. Savage Model 24. Lots of information on the uh, on the internet about this beautiful little gun. Once again, I completely refinished this. Now, <clears throat> I know you purists out there, don't say it, don't tell me. You shouldn't have done that. You destroyed the value. I know that. Trust me, <laughs> if you had seen this gun before I cleaned it up, you wouldn't have been worried about the value. This is what I call a boat gun. I think some of you understand that boat gun. You know what this is, a boat gun? This is a gun that you take out and, and, you, and you, you throw it in the bottom of the boat in case you need a gun. And that's what this was. For me, this was my boat gun. I stood it up on the cab of the tractor. I put it in the back of the ATV. I carried it on the snowmobile. It just went everywhere with me. And over the past 25, 30 years, it's been beaten up pretty badly. Barrel was kept in good shape, kept clean while oiled, but the stock was a mess, just a mess. The butt plate was chipped badly. Uh, uh, the, the forearm here, which comes off very easy for a takedown. I should show you that too quickly. I think you've seen this. Mm, I replaced the spring. Great. Take that off and it comes apart. So it's easy to carry as well. Just about that easy. Snap the forearm back on. So you see it's a, it's a very versatile, easy to use gun as well.
just that easy. I really, really like it. But anyway, I refinished this completely. So now the stock is beautiful, uh, all re-blued. I re-blued it myself. I'm pretty handy with that. Cleaned everything up. No, it's not original, but it's beautiful. Again, it wasn't beautiful before. Nice gun. If you're thinking of a gun for around the ranch, consider it. They're not inexpensive. They're pretty popular, so you may have to pay a couple of bucks for one. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. I have a number of guns. I've really cut back on the number of guns I have now. I just don't use them. And I'm very much a user of my guns. If I'm not using them, I get rid of them. This has been a handy one. I'm going to keep it a long time. Maybe for my grandson, too, one day. Anyway. Maybe something in there of interest to you, something to think about. Hope you enjoyed that. Alec Pierce at the ranch.